welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolyn if you're new here and today I'm doing the bar in the bookcase original tag. Um, Steffi from Perks of Steph and Nicole from um, Books from Bed both tagged me in this video or tagged me in this tag so thank you so much. I'm so excited. Um, this is such a smart tag. I'm really starting to like these tag videos because it requires no creativity from me and I could just use Jalen's wonderful brain. <laughs> so a lot of these drinks I've never had. Some maybe I've never heard of. Um, but we'll see. Um, I'm actually on a journey now to find my like cocktail of choice, like my signature drink. Um, I didn't really drink that much in college and like I know I love red wine and I know I love Guinness, but other than that I'm like, I have no idea what my drink is. My boyfriend has been making me like different cocktails every few nights to try and I'll have like a sip or two and just none of them have been hitting the mark and he's working so hard so I feel like so bad um, but they're just, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure I really have been loving Moscow Mules but I don't know if I'm ready co to commit to that being like my drink um, sorry my dog is like something you'll have to get used to in this house um, so I'm still looking for a drink so please comment below like your favorite cocktail if you drink or just a cocktail that you think I should try because I'm struggling. Today I have a not strong at all margarita. Um, it's like all we have in the house other than white wine and I just can't do that to myself. White wine I think is so disgusting and I, I just can't. I just can't get on board with that right now. So margarita. Um, okay so first an old fashioned historical fiction recommendation. So do you even have to ask? Of course I'm going to say Hilary Mantel's Wolf Hall series. I know you're sick and tired of hearing it and I'm sorry, but I think those books, like, there's just nothing compares in the historical fiction realm to those books. I think they're so detailed, they're so researched, they're so imaginative. They bring you into these, like, inner room conversations where, like, they kind of change the tides of history and we're watching, like, in, like, the rooms that nobody dared cross. Um, I still think about like some specific lines from those books. I think like even like Bring Up the Bodies, the second book, a few of those lines like actually stuck with me. Um, one of like my favorite is Hilary Mantel describes um, Oliver Cromwell that you could read the laws of England through his silk shirts when he starts to like rise in prominence and all of a sudden he's extremely wealthy and like at the right hand of Henry VIII um, and that he basically is the law. <laughs> he's invented it, he's written it, but Again, Wolf Hall, Bring Up the Bodies, um, The Mirror and the Light. I like actually cannot recommend any books more, and I know that they're long. And you could like take breaks in between, but <laughs> you will not be disappointed. I think like actually at the beginning of quarantine, like all my mom and I did was watch like History Channel and BBC documentaries about the Tudors. That's like actually all we did. That's my favorite type of history to like learn or read about, and I don't know why it's like strangely comforting. So actually a lot of the books that I read last year were like um, the True Queen and Alison uh, Weir's The Marriage Game and Catherine of Aragon, The True Queen. Like, I love those type of historical fictions. Um, that's my shit. So, um, this was like an easy win for me. Okay, a sidecar. I don't even know what that is, what drink, what drink that is. Um, a book with a strong supporting character. So, um, there's so many books you could choose for this, but immediately I thought of Henry from The Secret History. I just can't think of a character more interesting to see through somebody else's eyes. I think being in Henry's mind would be like terrifying, um, but to kind of see him through our protagonist's eyes, I loved that. I think like, I mean everyone, Francis, what are their other names? Bunny, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, um, but I, I think that was like one of the best parts of the book to like be in this like inner clicky cult and kind of see them at like midnight in somebody's apartment huddled having these like very intense conversations that college students like should not be having. Um, so I would say Henry. He is my man. Very disturbed. Mm. In Manhattan, a book set in New York. So this is actually a book that I just finished that I thought of um, and that is Detransition Baby. Um, so obviously this book is set in New York and I won't really get too much into the plot because I'm going to talk about it in my March wrap up but I'm also sure you've heard but basically we follow Ames, Katrina, and Reese. Ames and Reese are exes um, and Ames gets his boss Katrina pregnant. Um, he didn't think he could because he had taken um, hormone blockers that he didn't think that he could get somebody pregnant. Um, he detransitioned to live as a man and basically 
they ask Reese to kind of come into this parenting triad with them because Reese has always wanted to be a mother and they kind of try to make it work amongst the three of them and we kind of follow them through that journey. I already said too much. Um, but basically, one of the scenes in this book that took me from like liking it to loving it was when the three of them first meet all together to have these conversations about like what this would look like if they all parented this child together. Um, and they have this conversation at like a New York glitzy glam gala. There's like Sarah Jessica Parker walking in in one of her wild outfits. There's Madonna and then there's like Meghan McCain who's described as like the straightest woman you could ever see. It got, that conversation got so deep but just to think about the larger setting, um, that book was brilliant. I will talk about it more. Um, a lot to think about and I loved it. Okay, next, next, next. Bloody Mary, a book that scared you slash messed you up. So I will say two because when I just talked about and I don't want to like keep talking about books that I've mentioned a million times but I have to say that I have been thinking about The Vegetarian a lot. I just finished it a few weeks ago. It's fresh on my mind but I also think that that book really unsettled me and made me kind of feel uncomfortable um, which it was supposed to so it did its job um, but I'm definitely still thinking about that book. Um, but that's also fresh in the mind but then one, I mean this is a very basic answer and I'm sorry but it's the it's the one that really sticks in my mind and I read it like years ago like five six years ago and that's The Road by Cormac McCarthy obviously this is like the most terrifying book ever written so I'm not saying any new information that you probably don't already know but having read that book so many years ago I still think of like two or three scenes of that book that will just like randomly pop into my mind you probably know the scenes I'm talking about but that book has like actually haunted me the only thing I can compare it to is like, have you ever seen the movie The Knowing with Nicolas Cage? Talking about, I saw this movie when I was like 13. I'm sure if I saw it now, maybe it wouldn't terrify me, but that movie like actually fucked me up. I can't even explain. And like, I've just like haven't, I've had nightmares about it since. I don't know what it is about that movie, but like, that's the road to me. Like, I always think about it, even though I saw it, or I read it so many years ago. Um, it's just terrifying. It's heartbreaking. It's violent and disturbing um and that book like actually messed me up and i can't believe we read that as high schoolers okay no an espresso martini that is a, a drink that i like a book that kept you reading into the night so i have two answers one that i'm just gonna like caveat with saying i hated it but i <laughs> it did keep me reading into the night so i have to give it credit for that and that is into the water by paula hawkins so this is basically follows a woman who's turned up dead in this river or lake that has like um, a lot of stories around it in this town that like throughout history women have ended up dead in this lake from, from suicide, from male violence, it's all kind of mysterious and very creepy. And you kind of, there's so many different perspectives as a lot of these thrillers tend to be with like the detectives, the daughter of the woman who died, the sister of the woman who died, it's, it's very complicated one and like this very strange woman who like is in the town and is obsessed with the history of this lake. Um, so it sounds interesting. Um, and Paula Hawkins is like a very established thriller writer. I was just, the twist was like so stupid and like I actually was like devouring this book. Just wanting to be like what's going on and it was a huge letdown. So that book did keep me up at night um, but I would not recommend. So I will then now give you a book that kept me up but I would recommend and that is Station Eleven. No, I should probably not have read a book about a world post-pandemic in this pandemic. But I think the book leaves you with a sense of like hopefulness, um, kind of amidst it all. But I, it is kind of terrifying. There are like cults that um, kind of rise up, and there are like you know prophet leaders and um, like this um, image that I have in my brain that is, is still there of like all these people that were just stranded in an airport that kind of like built their base and their home there and now they're there for like you know decades later um has really stuck with me and I just really wanted to see like what happened to all these characters and we kind of flash back from like the night before the pandemic in in like a major city um to then you know a few I think it's years or decades I forget later of like where all these people are kind of what the world looks like through their eyes now and I just it was really really upsetting but it does leave you with a positive, a positive feeling nonetheless, if you can, if you can believe that. Um, so that one kept me, kept me enthralled. And this is a drink I don't know what it is. A Cesarac? I don't know. Um, okay, a book that left you disoriented. 
So a lot of other people who've done this tag, Jalen himself, um, Nicole mentioned this book, um, but they mentioned it for another prompt. But I'm going to put Bunny for this prompt that left me disoriented. disoriented. Um, Bunny is a book that, like, did no wrong. Like, it really, like, is such a good book. It's so weird, so, like, violent, but in, like, a clicky, girly, like, cultish way, which I love. Um, it's in a, like a very prestigious MFA program, and it's this very um, popular clique of girls who call themselves and each other Bunny. And they basically take this loner girl into the fold, and she breaks loose. Um, it is such a good book. I loved it, I think. For me, it left me disoriented because the way Mona Awad wrote it is like eventually we get to a point where there's like group think, and they all share one mind and one... Um, what's like the word? Like we hear from them, not like a bunch of people talking at once, but it's all like one thought process. Basically like hive mentality and they, um, that's an incredible book. I mean it, it definitely works for the next for the next tag, The Long Island Ice Tea, a book that's doing too much, but I wanted to change it up and I thought of another book for this one. Um, the next book is A Long Island Ice Tea, a book that is doing too much, bonus points if it works anyway. So my pick for this one is not like the bunny craziness, which works, I think works really well. For me, I chose The Deep by River Solomons, which um, basically is an imagined world of mermaids who are, um, their ancestral line goes all the way back to enslaved women um, who were pregnant that were thrown overboard on ships. Um, this book is beautifully written and basically takes us right into it. It's like a very, very short book and to me that's why it did like so much because it first of all introduces you to this whole world, this whole underwater community, and then it kind of shows you their ancestral line. But I think what this book did so well is um, they have this role in their community, in their species. Um, the, the historian is charged with um, keeping that information safe and kind of that burden is on them. Um, so I think this book does a really good job of talking about like the inheritance of trauma and the physical weight of trauma um, and that it's like a shared experience. Um, but to me this book did so much, like too much, because it's such a small book, um, but it shows you a community, um, it shows you their ancestral line, there's like a love story, there's mermaids, um, there's so many important themes going on in like this mythological world. Um, I loved it and I'm so excited to read more River Solomon, but to me it did a lot in a very, very short book, but it was successful. A Negroni, a book with a love triangle. So as we've established in my last video, I'm not a fan of a love triangle, but this book that I just read, Never Let Me Go, has a love triangle, and that book, I don't even have the words yet, I'm still processing, still reeling, but for me this love triangle was acceptable because it's kind of like in the veil of childhood innocence and a childhood friendship. Um, um, so Never Let Me Go um, basically follows these three um, students who are in like this very prestigious boarding school um, and kind of learn why they're in this special school, why these teachers, are these call, they're called guardians, um, why they're charged with caring for these children, what makes them special, why are they kind of um, severed off from the rest of the world. And it's a heartbreaking book, it's beautiful, it's moving, it's deeply upsetting sometimes, but it also kind of has that overarching veil of just like childhood innocence um, and childhood wonder, which I think makes it all the more heartbreaking. Um, I'll talk about it more, but to me that's a, um, a love triangle that does not annoy. Okay, A Bay Breeze, a book with a light, chill, heartwarming vibes. So I think my pick for this is a good pick, but it was also my only pick. I was like looking at my shelves and there was like nothing lighthearted. I'm, I'm doing okay guys, I promise. I just like don't read that many heartwarming books. I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I, so I picked The House in the Cerulean Sea, obviously. I recently talked about this book in my February wrap up. It's about magical children on an island. There's a gay love story. It's about children finding their place in the world, finding your family, finding your people. Um, so I mean, yeah, it's heartwarming, it's beautiful, it's super cheesy, um, and I would recommend it. If you're ever feeling really shitty, um, that's the one to pick up. Okay, Dark and Stormy, a book that's dark, thrilling, and menacing. Bonus points if its setting matches. Um, so of course, I'm not doing anything new, I'm not reinventing the wheel, and my choice is um, I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. That book 
I get bonus points because it's like a dark, snowy night. It's a store, a snowstorm. Um, so that counts. It's also very menacing, very uncomfortable, very dark and creepy. Um, that's like a thriller, horror, a little bit of both. And it does everything right. I know people could tell and complain about the ending, but also like the ending didn't bother me. But I know it bothers some people, but even if it, you think the ending might bother you, just read it for like the 97% that everyone else loves, okay? Martini, a classic recommendation. So, of course, I'm just going to say right off the bat, Pride and Prejudice. I think that's one of my favorite classics that I've read. Um, I am still hopefully working my way through all, all of Austin's finished novels this year. Um, I've taken a little bit of a break um, just with so many other books that I wanted to read, but hopefully to get back to that soon. Um, it's on my list. But another one I will mention is Jane Eyre. Um, I read that last year. I had never read it before. And I really, really loved it. Again, thank you so much, Nicole and Steffi, for tagging me in this video. It was so much fun to do. Thank you, Jalen, for your incredible brain for making this. Um, and again, please comment below. You can talk about books all you want, but also please leave some cocktail recommendations if you have any. But thank you. This has been so much fun to just sit, chat, hang out. Um, I started my channel a few months ago now. I don't even remember. A few months ago. And I have kind of only done sit-down videos, and I think... I do want to maybe do like a reading vlog, maybe like next week I'll do it. Um, I was so hesitant to do it at first because I was like, oh my god, like, I'm so awkward and my life is like so boring and right now I'm on spring break so like I actually don't even have work to go to so I literally do nothing. Like, I wake up, work out, have my oatmeal, read, put on mascara if it's a good day um, and like I literally do nothing. And then I was talking to Steffi and she's like, no, like do it. Um, but also like everyone's lives are boring right now and that's fine. And if your life isn't boring, you're probably not being socially responsible so get bored like the rest of us. Um, there are brighter days to come, I'm sure of it, um, but for now. Um, so maybe I will do that next week. There's a few books that I'm getting in the mail, I hope, very soon, um, that maybe I could do for my reading vlog. Um, so feel free to subscribe if you feel so inclined. I hope that will be coming shortly. Um, and then, then of course my March wrap-up part two to be coming shortly. We're almost in April, which is crazy. Um, but again, thank you so much for watching, and I will tag, again, I don't know that many people on booktube, it's a little, little stressful, um, but I will tag um, Kristen is fully booked. Uh, I've been enjoying her content and her like beautiful yellow chair, it's her staple. Um, she, she's new as well, and then Riveting Reads, who I go to for like my thriller horror recommendations, um, she's my girl for that. So if either of you want to do this, and also anyone else that um, is watching this video, like, please support Jalen and his tag, he did such a great job, and it was really fun, so thank you so much. Bye, everyone.